Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel, and today I'm speaking with Peter Clousey about Silver Bullet Mines. Hi, Chris. Silver Bullet's a new listing coming out, SBMI. Uh, SBMI? How are you feeling about it? You know, I was looking for a silver deal at PDAC 2020, and I couldn't find one. And my friend John Carter from Oakville gave me a call the next month and said, I'm putting together a silver deal. Would you mind helping? And that's where this started. We signed a deal with a vehicle. We had a minimum raise of $3 million, wound up raising 6.2 in a massively oversubscribed financing. And now we're trading. Life is good. <laughs> so where's the project? The main projects are near Globe, Arizona. You know, Globe is like Sudbury or Timmins. These are cities that exist to support mining communities. So Globe is very mining friendly. The first mine, we have five former silver producers. We're going to put the Buckeye back into production almost immediately. If not for supply chain issues out of China, we'd be in production already. We're going to assemble the mill. We own our own mill. We own our own assay lab. And we're going to get to work on the ore. Having our own assay lab means we don't have to wait 10, 12 weeks for third party results to come back. When you're pulling material out of the vein face, you wanna know exactly where the high grade is and we can get answers in a day. So this uh, mine itself or this old mine, um, you've had some previous work done on it to get it, so you have a pretty good understanding of the grades and stuff. So give us a little history of the project. Uh, the Buckeye was in production in the late 1800s. Then it was in partial production in the 1980s and experienced a, a cave-in. We have cleaned up that cave-in to get back to the mineralized area. The second property we're going to put into production is the McMorris mine. Now the McMorris mine, most of you have already heard of without knowing it, because it's the source of the legend of the Lone Ranger's bullets. And that's one of the reasons why we called the company Silver Bullet Mines is that historical tie into the Lone Ranger and those stories. What's the infrastructure like in the area? Really good. We, we can drive to the property in a normal vehicle. Uh, we have security. We expanded the septic system, expecting a larger workforce. We have electricity. We have all the things that you would expect to have, including mining talent. Um, the mining talent in Arizona is second to none. And we've been very fortunate to recruit some of them to the team. And, and what's the size of this mine? So the five, my, the five former producers all sit on a property called Black Diamond. And Black Diamond is 5,000 acres. Uh, and do and you think what sort of production do you think you'll get in the first year? I'm not answering that. We don't have a PEA. We don't <laughs> have a resource estimate. So 43101 says we can't. We're following the Pat Sheridan model. Okay. We know where the mineralization is. We have our own mill. So go mine that stuff. And when the first financials come out, then people will be able to see grade, they'll be able to see tonnage, they'll be able to figure out cash flow and then valuation. So what sort of uh, drilling are you doing on the property these days? And do you have your own drill? We have an underground drill. We don't have a surface drill. Uh, it's not that kind of property. It's vein chasing. So you go underground and you follow the vein where the vein goes. And that's why having our own assay lab is so important. So we know instantly where the high grade portions of the vein are instantly within a day yeah and you did some uh, a big financing and so how long do you think that'll carry you through it should take us through to production and positive cash flow and originally you thought you'd have production by q4 but it looks like you're going to be uh, leaching into uh i said uh, not leaching but i guess <laughs> moving into q1 that's funny it's a gravity mill so that's why it's funny <laughs> yeah uh, it'll probably be q1 we're waiting on some parts that are on a boat outside the harbor of los angeles just like everybody else our first bin is through and we've installed the conveyor belts, uh, sorry, the concentrator belts, concentrator tables, the falcons are going in, the fine ore um, sorters have been poured, mill pad has been poured, assay shack is constructed and ready to roll to the extent that we've started doing third party assays just in the interim uh, to get the, all the kinks worked out at the lab. Now, outside of the Black Diamond property, what else is going on in Silver Bullet? Well, in December of 2020, sorry, not true, November of 2020, uh, a friend of the company passed away, unfortunately, and his family had an asset in Idaho, and they came to us rather surprisingly and said, would you like to buy this from us? And Mr. Carter, the CEO, jumped at it because he was familiar with the property. 
we were expecting to work on it in a couple of years, just you know, mitigate risk by having a variety of properties in different jurisdictions. Well, we're doing some investigative work. There's some surface rock that appears to have been dumped from mining in the 1890s. So we'll investigate that rock and report back to the market. We also have a grass field in Nevada. It's not in the immediate plans for exploration. So why, when you were uh, mentioning looking for a silver project, why are you looking for a silver project? It, it, what, what's happening right now in the world do you think that silver is a, a commodity that's undervalued? At the time, silver was $15 an ounce. Today, it's 24 to 26 bouncing around. Uh, I don't believe in the gold-silver ratio because if we all know about the gold-silver ratio, then it ceases to have meaning. Then you're just trading against other people knowing about the ratio not the ratio itself. But there's a shortage of silver in the world. There's been no major silver discovery for years and certainly not a pure silver production like we expect to have down at Buckeye and then the other mines. If you're watching this, you're using silver on your phone, your laptop, your iPad, your computer. Silver is a the key use is in electronics. It's also used in jewelry, many industrial applications, health applications because it appears to be antimicrobiotic. And when silver gets woven into things, it kills bacteria. So there's, there is a shortage of silver in the world. Annual production is about 200 million tons, of which about 10% is from recycling. World consumption exceeds that. That means there's a shortage. We're going to see a lot of shortages, Chris. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, copper is short, cobalt is short, lithium is going to, lithium's up 300% in 2021, and the year's not over yet. Cobalt is up over 100%. And silver, since I got involved in May of 20, April, May of 2020, is up 80%. So, so currently the stock price or the, the companies in the, what we call the pre-production sweet spot, uh, yes. as, you, as you get things ready to go, what sort of things uh, can investors anticipate as catalysts over the next uh, three to six months uh, that they should keep aware of uh, with the company? So there are... Two things I think that will be of great interest to the market. The first is the continued release of technical information as we assay the dumps, as we assay Idaho, as, as we do the normal things that an exploration and production company would do. Those numbers will regularly come to market. The other thing that's going to be really interesting is the first set of financial statements from the resulting issuer being Silver Bullet Mines. Um, as I mentioned earlier, from the financials, you'll be able to pull grade, and tonnage and cost per ounce. And if you know cost per ounce and grade and tonnage, you can calculate free cash flow for the quarter. Multiply that by four, do some adjustment upwards for the other exploration properties. Uh, and that gives you a rough valuation based on cash flow. So the first set of financial statements are going to be very informative. Thanks, Peter. The company is Silver Bullet Mines. The ticker is SBMI on the TSX Venture Exchange. And we look forward to following your progress. Thanks for your time, Chris. It's always good to see you.